Hey, what up? Filming uh, with a laptop again, which is weird, but um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it works. Um, a comment was made about uh, Ray Pete talking about how people who live at high elevation live longer. And it's true if you look at the three counties in the United States with the highest life expectancy. Lo and behold, they're the highest counties. You know, it's Pitkin County, Eagle County, and Summit County. I'm in Summit County right now, which is, uh, I believe, number one in life expectancy of all the counties in the U.S. I don't know how many counties there are in the U.S., but it's a shitload. So the fact that these three counties touch each other is very interesting. And it's also interesting that this area, you know, a lot of areas that are associated with longevity in the U.S., they have a, a very high Asian population. We know by ethnicity, and it's because of size, right, uh, that Asians live the longest, followed by Latinos, followed by whites, followed by blacks. Uh, yes, I know there's other ethnicities, but for uh, brevity's sake, those are the, the, the ones will, you know, that they kind of move the needle in terms of life expectancy in the United States. And it corresponds with, with height and, uh, you know, overall body size. Weight matters too, but it doesn't matter as much as height. Height really determines, that's what sets your maximum lifespan. Now, there's a lot of other factors. Life expectancy is not necessarily the best indicator of whether people in an area are really living longer, right? The main things that affect life expectancy, uh, you know, are, are preventing early death from, you know, you know, maternal death, um, death during childbirth, um, you know, young people dying of infections and, and easily preventable deaths like that just by having good access to health care, uh, people overdosing on opioids, suicides, you know, all, all these kinds of things like really lower the life expectancy, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, etc. And so once you're in a society that's more or less affluent and it's got good quality access to health care, you know, if we if we are only to judge those areas against one another, um, so that it's really on a level playing field, only then could we kind of tease out any kind of meaningful data as to whether people are doing something or there's something about what they're eating or how they're living uh, that's helping them live longer. What's interesting about the area that we're in here? Yes, it's an affluent area. There's good access to medical care and all those things, but. The vast majority of the population in these three counties that have exceptional longevity is white. And whites come in third in life expectancy in the United States. And so living a, almost a decade longer here versus whites living in the rest of the country uh, is really actually pretty interesting. So is Ray Pete right? Is it a matter, is there some kind of cool carbon dioxide, uh, oxygen uptake, hemoglobin kind of effect going on here that enables people to live longer. Um, I, honestly, I don't think the explanation is that exotic. I think it's the lifestyle here is totally different. Um, in mountainous regions, you know, high elevation also is going to be mountainous, obviously, with rugged terrain. And um, people who live in these communities are extremely active. And I think that physical activity is, you know, it's probably the simple explanation for why the, the life expectancy is so much higher in this area. Um, you know, I've camped on a road right now. It's got 23 campsites on it. All of those were full like Thursday night because everybody's just wild, wildly excited to get out here. But, I mean, 50, 60, 70 cars have driven by to access just one of of maybe 50, 60, 70 trailheads in the area. So um, hiking in particular is really interesting because, you know, these people are planning to go out for anywhere from two to eight hours or longer of fairly difficult cardio. I mean, we're at high elevation, the terrain is, is steep and rocky, uh, and these people are often carrying additional weight. A lot of people are going backpacking and carrying overnight loads of 20, 30, 40 pounds on their back and, uh, and going out and hiking all day with that. And um, they might climb some peaks while they're out here and do some other things. So 
it, it's not going to the gym, you know. You hear all this stuff about, you know, get your three 30-minute workouts a week or something like that as being kind of standard fitness advice, standard exercise advice. And everybody out here today is getting more than that just today. And they're probably going to go do something big tomorrow. Uh, there were tons of cars coming in late night, last night, Friday night. Uh, those people were not driving back down the road, so I know they weren't camping. And so I think what they were doing is actually packing up after dark uh, and, and going out and hiking for several hours in the, in the dark to go out. Um, so just the enthusiasm that people have here for outdoor activity and the nature of out, outdoor activity. I mean, it's just hours and hours and hours. I mean, it's not some they don't go out for 30 minutes and call it good. Um, it's an all day thing for most of them. And it's not something that's only in the summer. You know, as soon as winter comes, it's snowshoeing, it's cross-country skiing, it's skiing, it's snowboarding, it's, um, you know, a whole slew of outdoor activities that continue in the wintertime. So that's really um, what 90% or more of the population does here. It's totally ingrained in the culture. You can't have a social life really here without... Uh, going out and, and doing those things regularly, that's what people do. Hey, want to go hiking this weekend? Sure, let's go. Uh, it's pretty simple. Want to go skiing on Sunday? Yeah, what time? Um, that's what people do. for. That's where the vast majority of their social interaction comes in. And people here are, you know, noticeably leaner, fitter. Um, and it continues in old age. I mean, I see people out in their 70s and 80s out hiking here all the time. Um, it's not just young people out here doing this. Uh, once you start, you know, it's pretty much uh, a lifelong thing that continues forever. Um, you know, you do it as long as you can. You never really lose your love for getting out and doing fun things and uh, seeing beautiful places and enjoying the outdoors. Um, so anyway, that's my case. I think uh, there's something really special about it. That's one of the reasons we came out here and decided to be so dedicated to being outdoors and getting physical activity and trying to to kind of meld with this lifestyle out here again i used to have this lifestyle and lost it living in florida but um we wanted to get out of here and meld with this this lifestyle get our daughter on board with this lifestyle um get my my wife with her uh knee replacements you know get her walking and up and running again uh, which hasn't happened but we're working on it and, um, yeah, I mean, we're already experiencing health benefits. And, and, I, and like I said, I think the main benefit of exercise is, is you, are, you are preventing the vast majority of, of heart attacks, strokes, and diabetes, which are three of the main killers of people, uh, send people to an early grave, um, you know, respiratory illnesses and a few other things. <laughs> I mean this is the cure out here. I mean, this is the, the best prophylactic against those things. And I think that's where that extra longevity comes from. Aside from the fact that it's affluent. I mean, if, if there were no mountains here, but it was as affluent as it is, the life expectancy would already be higher because of better medical care and, and, uh, you know, better food quality and some other things, you know, but, um, you know, people who live in affluent areas and who are affluent, you know, are often, better physical specimens than those who are not and who do not live in these places. So it's not just a matter of, oh, I've got money, I'm not stressed. So uh, it's there's so much more than that. And I think ultimately it comes down to having uh, great access to good health care, life-saving care. And uh, But here, you know, not everybody's walking around with, with stents and, and, and has a history of having two or three heart, heart attacks and stuff like that because they're in their 70s. Uh, you know, the, the rates are significantly lower here. So anyway, that's my two cents on that. Uh, it's a nice area. It's nice to be here. And um, yeah, I think that what's so beautiful about this is that you're not fighting against the culture of the area to go out and be active and live a healthy life. Like it's just, that is the culture here. So by going with the flow, you don't have to go against the flow. You can go with the flow and be healthy and that makes it so much easier. I mean, it makes it so much easier when your friends want to go out and, and do these awesome activities that, 
that have that yield tremendous health benefits rather than do self-destructive activities uh, that do the opposite. So, I mean, there's plenty of self-destructive activity going out here too. Obviously, drugs and alcohol are uh, are uh, very popular here, but um, you know, a lot of that damage seems to be more than offset by you know playing in the mountains all day and uh, staying super super physically fit year round. Anyway, that's it. I'll catch you guys again soon.